Bible. You live by the word of God. The word of God has a way of giving you compass to navigate your way. If you want the knowledge of God in your life, if you want to increase and grow and multiply the knowledge of God's word in your life, spend time in his word. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. And I don't think you want to end up on the wrong side. <laughs> no, you don't want to run. Be up to 1,000 years before Judas betrayed the Messiah, his life was predictable. This one, with whom we enter into the house of God together in company, he lifted his heel against me. Lifting of the heel is a proverbial term for treachery, for betrayal. Meaning you don't do that to the anointed of the Lord, the Messiah, and get away with it. He said, the one with whom we deep hands together, we took, we took company together into the house of God. He lifted his heel against me. And he said, for such a one, his house will become desolate. From the Psalms, Psalm 22, Psalm 69, Psalm 109, the outcome of the one who betrays the very word of God, the Messiah, the word made flesh had been predicted 1,000 years before the time. Likewise, in every area of our lives, when we belittle the word of God, we despise the word of God, we scorn the word of God, we say, mm, I beg now for that, now for Israel, not before for the courts. Didn't you see that they wrote Jerusalem in that place you are quoting? I beg now, may I not be Jerusalem pilgrim. May I be Portago pilgrim here. When you despise, you disdain, you belittle the word of God, you also make your life predictable. When you tremble at his word, he said, to this man will I look. He who trembles at my word, he who has a contrite heart. When the moment you read it in God's word, you want to align your life. The moment you read it, this is not just in the Holy Bible, because in the Holy Bible, you have the word of a man, you have the word of a falling mind, you have the word of an arrogant man, you have the word of the devil, but when you realize that this is the word of God, this is the inspired word of the Lord, and you use it to govern your life, Jesus, God said, I will attend to this man, I will give him attention. He said through the prophet Isaiah, to this man will I look, he who trembles at my word, he who is of a contrite heart, he who trembles at my word. So I'm saying to us here to start with tonight, the word of God is not a history book, it's not a suggestion book, it's not an opinion book. It's a divine navigating system for living. It's a divine compass for living. It's a prophetic book of destiny. And having said that, let me make a little bit of progress tonight. The word of God is cardinal in the life of a Christian. Principal in the life of a Christian should be principal. We're encouraged to live by the word. We're encouraged to have our expectations from God based on his word. Whatever your expectation, maybe you're a housewife, maybe you're a trader, maybe you're a business person, maybe you're a pastor, maybe you're a mega city, a mega city pastor. Maybe you're a prophet. Whatever expectations we have of God should always be based on his word. God will never violate his word. He said heaven and earth may pass, 
but my words will not pass. In another place, we'll be looking and for that, we'll be looking in details into some of these things in the days to come. In another place, he said that so shall my word be that proceeds out of my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. It shall go to accomplish that which I please. It shall prosper where I have sent it. The word of God encourages us that whatever your expectation of God, whoever you are having an expectation of God, your expectation should always be based. Your expectation should always be founded on the word of God. Let me share with us here what God's word can do for you. If you make yourself a student of the word, Paul wrote to his son in the faith in 2 Timothy and chapter 2, he says, study. To study means become a student. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God. Sometimes we study because we want to go and preach somewhere. If care is not taken, a pastor, a prophet, a teacher, an evangelist, someone with the call of God on his life will spend more time studying because he wants to go and preach. That was never God's call on our lives. That was never God's intention for our lives. That was never God's priority for our lives. Public ministry should be an overflow of private fellowship. When you fellowship with God and your vessel is brought before the Lord and God continues to fill up your vessel and it begins to fill you with himself and it begins to fill you with himself and it begins to fill you with himself and your vessel becomes filled up. Public ministry only begins when that vessel begins to overrun, overflow. But when you spend time studying God's word because you want to go and preach, that is why people experience, I was sharing with a minister a few days ago, that is why people, Christians, Christian leaders, apostles, general overseers, experience spiritual burnout. Because what was meant for their sustenance, what was meant for their survival, what was meant for their refreshing in the very presence of God, they were putting all the energy at what I will tell the people. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So, I'm challenging us in here, friends, as to what the Word of God can do in your life if you build your life around the Word of God. You study to show yourself approved of God, a workman who needs not to be ashamed. On a first level, if you have the right heart towards God's Word, you are not going with an attitude of a scoffer. A despiser. What do they have to say in that word again? Uh, some weeks ago, I read of a Nigerian from a family I used to know on university campus. I don't know whether he's a sibling or maybe they just have a common son name, but that name, that name is not a common name. So when I saw the name, I said, I hope this young man is not the son of this professor that used to be on my primary school campus. And I saw the young man was expelled from university because he was a homosexual. So having been expelled, he went abroad and stepped up his homosexual activity. He became a transgender. Born as a man, I really hope he's not from the family I know, I used to know. Born as a man, behaved like a lady on campus, did all those things with other men now went to Europe and became a full-fledged with the surgical procedure to go with it. A full-fledged trans. I don't mean transdresser. I mean transgender. But <laughs> well, that's not the issue. And you know the amazing thing? I read about him online some weeks ago. One of the news um, portals I read online. How you took to the cleaners everything about Christianity, everything about the Bible. And he was very well versed in scriptures. Quoting scriptures, how God should not be worshipped. And he started to, I mean, I was amazed. I said, it's either this guy is very versatile in his Bible study, or he just pressed some Google applications for Bible and brought out those things. Amazing. But what I'm saying to us in here is not enough to just 
put together scriptures, put together scriptures just like that young man has done. I'm saying to us here, when you study to live by it, these are some things you can expect the word of God to produce in your life. God's word reveals God. Hello friends, I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions, and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. That's the first thing. If you have a right word foundation, a right attitude to the word of God, as you study God's word, you will come, across, you will come out with one conviction. A revelation of God. The word of God reveals God. I'm breaking this down in the revelation of God. It reveals the will of God. I talk about the will. I'm talking about what God desires. Desires for humanity. Desires for you as a person. Desires for you as a married man, married woman. The word of God will do one thing for you. It will reveal God in terms of the revelation of God's will. You will, if you study scriptures and go through scriptures from Old Testament to New Testament, you will come out with the conviction and, uh, that this is the will of God. You see, for example, the Bible is saying in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 to verse 2, he said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. He said, don't be conformed to this world. Don't allow external forces, external situations, job situations, economic situations, external forces to mold your life. Do not be conformed to this world. The system of the world, the mentality of the world, the way of the world. But he said, but be transformed. Conformity is external, like a mold. Transformation is from within, like a renewal or a revelation applied. He said, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And look at this further, that you may prove or confirm what is that good and acceptable and perfect what? And these are not gradients. Good, acceptable, perfect are not gradients. Every word, every will of God is good for you. Every will of God is acceptable. Every will of God is perfect. Because the word of God, which is also the will of God, as the, the psalmist said in Psalm 12, he said, has been passed through the fire seven times, purified. So, come and seven in scriptures is a number of completion or perfection. So that is why, because of the pure purifying process, because of the fiery process, the word of God has been through seven stages of the fiery process. It comes out perfect. It comes out good. It comes out acceptable. One thing the word of God will do for you, it will bring to you the revelation of God. You will not just know God as an abstract God. One God they said is in heaven. Uh, the, the big man upstairs give him a wiper. No. You will go beyond that sense of re revelation. I mean of, of, of tradition and religion. You will, you will know that anything God is hallow territory. That is why you see Jews, they don't joke with anything God. I have a friend who left Christianity and went to Judaism. But, you know, that's not for this forum. And then I started calling my wife's attention. I said, I noticed when I transact with this friend of mine, when we chat on WhatsApp, 
when I re make references to God and he wants to respond, he doesn't write G-O-D. He will write G dash D. For a long time I felt, what's the meaning of, is it that <laughs> you cannot even call God again? Then recently I realized, as a mark of reverence and respect, they feel no human being is worthy to carry his hands to ink out the name of God. So they write G dash D as a mark of respect. And these are people who don't carry the spirit of revelation, the spirit of truth, like a Christian carries. So I'm saying to you here, if you study the word of God, don't just study because pastor told you. Don't just study because your Sunday school teachers told you. Let there be a longing in your heart for the living God. Know your source, know your maker, know your creator. And one thing the word of God will do for you, it will leave you with the revelation of God. And many things I have to say, before we pray tonight about the revelation of God. When we talk about the, how the word of God reveals God, I'm talking about it will reveal the will of God. Closely related to that, I'm talking about the, the study of God's word will reveal the plan of God, the overall plan of God. And in the midst of the overall plan, you begin to locate yourself. You will realize all scriptures don't apply to you, but every time you read some particular scriptures, it's like your name is in there. How many of you have experienced that before? Because I have. It's like God is having a dialogue with you personal, even though other people have the same Bible. But every time you come across some particular verses, it could just be one or two verses. It's like, God, did you have me in mind when you wrote this thing, when you told your prophets to write this thing? Have you experienced that before? I have. So, the word of God will not only reveal God in a general sense, it will reveal God in a very personal way so that your life in God is not left to human argument. They can have the argument as long as you have God. Do you understand that? Hello, friends. I want to recommend this. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploring His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you, Grace Exploring His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions, and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. It will reveal the plan of God. The word of God, if you spend time with it and apply it to your life, it will also reveal to you the past deeds of God. That's the second thing I'd like to highlight there in the revelation of God. It will reveal to you what God has done in the past. That's why someone like Gideon can come up and say, uh -uh, uh, you mean you are really for us? Then how come you have not protected us against all these our enemies? You see another psalm, in another psalm, the psalm said, we see not our signs. There are no longer any prophet or anyone to tell us how long this famine, how long? This economic recession, how long? This challenge, how long? We see not our signs. Those are people who have been with God and spent time with God. And they know that God does not leave his own in isolation. He does not leave his own in doubt. He does not leave his own in a vague place. He shows what he has done before as a challenge to you that he can do it again. Jesus, the same yesterday today and forever. You hear Jesus speaking in one place in Mark chapter 13. He said that which I say to one, I say to all. One thing the word of God leaves me, one conviction I get from the word of God is that it shows me about God his past deeds, his creative powers, his ability to forgive, his ability to make something out of nothing. His ability to suspend the sun. His ability to suspend the moon. His ability to thunder from heaven and scatter the enemies of his people on the earth. 
His ability to supply in the midst of scarcity. His ability to make a way where there seems to be no way. No matter your talent, friends, there is a parallel for you in the word of God. He has done it before. You may be facing a social challenge. You may be facing a spiritual challenge. You may be facing a moral challenge. You may be facing a gender challenge. You may be facing an economic crisis. A, a reading, studying the word of God will show you what God has done before. People have faced economic challenges before. People have faced identity crisis before. People have been in captivity before. Who want to be free? People have been labeled badly labeled as a bad product by parents before and God turned their stories around. Remember Jabez? Friends, you remember Jabez? Even from the factory of his parents, they said this one is a bad product. And in studying the word of God, it shows us how he handled one man who was willing to trust him. Friends, never give up on yourself. Never use your background to color your future. Never use your present circumstance to describe where you are going because your circumstance is not your navigating system. The hand of God, the word of God is your prophetic book of destiny. If you describe your life by your present circumstances, you will die in frustration. When the world begins to tell you, though your beginning was small, your latter end should greatly increase. Better is the end of a thing than the, begin, than, the, than, than, than the beginning thereof. Though your beginning was small, your latter end should greatly increase. The path of a righteous man shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. He said he takes men out of dung hills, out of refuse heaps, and sets them amongst the princes. Then you realize your case was not even as bad as a dung hill. Are you still in here or you elsewhere? The word of God will make you come to a revelation of God. A revelation of his will, a revelation of his plan, a revelation of his past deeds. How he has helped people. How against all odds he forgave people. How people who started out in a rascally manner became nobles. Furthermore, because of time tonight, the word of God reveals God, and I'm explaining, I've explained to us, reveals the will of God. On the second level, reveals the past deeds of God. Here tonight, on the third level, reveals the future plans of God. <laughs> Friends, even if you are jobless tonight, you will not always be in that condition. Even where you are socially rejected, socially disadvantaged, you will not always be in that condition. The word of God always portrays and depicts a better future. He took his children in disobedience. He took them into captivity. He said, but you will not always be there. I know the thoughts I think towards you. I'm not thinking of keeping you in this captivity or taking you back into bondage. I know the thoughts I think towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. One John says to give you an expected end. Nobody expects calamity. Even people in prison are hoping the next day the prison gates will be open for them. Even people on hospital bed are hoping the next day they walk out from the, on, from the hospital ward. The word of God will convince you of two things about the future that God has a plan. <laughs> He's not running riot. He's not doing... Um, um, ah, where's Pastor Emeritus? He's not doing one arm bandit. He will understand that if, he's, if he was here. Is Victoria here? Uh -huh. Victoria understands that. One arm bandit. <laughs> God is not a gambler. You cannot have such a precious destiny, precious life, though it is yet to appear to you as precious, but because of the value placed on your life. Jesus went all the way to Calvary. Because of the value, your parents don't value you, your environment does not value you, your environment is not even aware of you, and here you are, you're already in your 30s, they don't even know you are living. But he said, I know the thoughts I think of you. And thoughts of peace and not of evil. You might not be there yet, but you will not always be here. 
The path of a righteous man. The path of a believer in God. The path of one who believes in God's word. The path of a righteous man shines brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. That's what the word of God can do in your life. He said you have Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. You have a more sure word. You have a more sure word. We went to the mount with him. He was transfigured before our very eyes. But you have something more than physical transformation. You have a more sure word of prophecy. In that you do well as you take heed. Meaning as you obey the word, you see a great future. You see the promise of God. You are not snorting with your mouth. You are not unbelieving in your mind. You are not skeptical in your mind. You take him at his word. He said as a light that shines in a dark place. Little light, but you give it room in your heart. That light will shine brighter. As a little light that shines in a dark place. Until the day dawns. That is until the breaking of the day and the morning star. And the morning star is the revelation of Jesus. Rises in your heart. God has a plan. God has a future plan. God has a future plan with your name on it. And that should leave you with a conviction... That there is a clear cut direction for your life. You might not know where the next meal will come from tonight. I might not even be able to pay for your dinner tonight. You might not know how to pay your house rent. You might not know what tomorrow holds. But the one who holds tomorrow has you on his mind. So don't join the company of those people who say nobody knows tomorrow. The one who owns it. Not just knows it. The one who owns tomorrow. Has you on his mind. Hallelujah. Let me close so we we'll pray here. God, God's word gives a definite direction about the future. The path of a righteous man shines brighter. When you read God's word, it will leave you with a conviction that there is a clear destination the totality of humanity there is a clear future some may disparage it, some may belittle it, some may doubt it but there is clarity in heaven's records about the future that's why God, the prophets and Jesus himself can be talking about the last days and talking about the signs of the last days and prophesying about the last days and some the mockers will come and say, everything has remained the same since the last apostle died. I beg, forget that thing here. Yeah. But God has a clear plan. That's why he can talk about a future rapture of the church. That's why he can talk about the final judgment. That's why he can talk about a consummation of all things. This present earth as it is constituted full of sin. And the heavens, he said, will be destroyed. Second Peter chapter 3, he said, and then he will create a new heavens and new earth. Wherein lies righteousness. It gives me the impression of a God who has a timeline, who has a clear cut plan, and is moving things towards it. Hello, friends. I want to recommend this book. It's a powerful book that just came off the press, authored by us. Um, Grace Exploits His Riches basically brings understanding of God's purpose for grace and the channels through which God makes grace available to human beings, the ultimate expression of grace, as well as the dangers that can come with the awesome grace of God. This one will bless you. Grace Exploits His Riches. I challenge you, check the TV screen for details on how you can get this book in your area and read, study, ask questions and apply the truth content to your life. I can assure you, your Christian life will move up a notch. You will never be the same. Praise God. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a casual listener, a passive Christian, I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
think on these words you've had today, and take them to heart, search the scriptures if these things are so, and live by them, and live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself and demonstrate himself and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister, let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember, Jesus, the Son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him, may we follow him, may we worship and serve him. God bless you. Amen.